Are you a home gardener and things eat your plants all the time and you don't know what to do? Well, if so, this is the video for you. This week has been an incredibly difficult week for me. I've had a lot of doctor visits, a lot of physiotherapy, and um, I've basically just been in a lot of pain. So even now I'm a bit medicated, so <laughs> excuse me if um, I make mistakes during this video. I'm doing my best because I know I made a commitment to produce at least one video per week to reach out to home growers and the agricultural community and sort of provide some sort of knowledge. So I'm trying my best to continue doing that and this video is my way of doing so. So without further ado, here's my top 5 do-it-yourself gardening hacks. I was scrolling through the book of faces the other day and I came across one of my older posts where people were asking me how is it that I'm able to grow my crops efficiently without using too many store-bought herbicides or pesticides. My answer, and I quote, my answer is always simple. When you surround yourself with the right company, you'll always find ways to grow comfortably. Similarly, when planting your crops, figure out what best complements your crop. For this video, I'd like to expand on that. Number five, companion planting with aromatic herbs. What I find works really well is you do some background research and find out what complements your crop. In my experience, planting aromatic herbs with the leafy vegetables helps to significantly reduce the rate of pest damage and pest incidence on that particular crop. Now, I'm not saying it completely reduces it, but I mean, instead of having your entire factory plant destroyed, you just have a few holes. Number four. The use of marigolds. Now marigolds are a tremendously underutilized resource when it comes to home gardening. They're one of the better companion plants out there because they're aesthetically pleasing, they smell nice, and they have beneficial properties. They serve as a deterrent to a lot of harmful nematodes that affect things like your lettuce. Have you ever planted lettuce and two or three weeks later the lettuce is just not growing no matter what you do? And if you dig it up and you look at the roots, you see that the rooting system has been greatly damaged. Well, congratulations, you had a stunted plant, most likely due to the presence of harmful nematodes in your soil. Number three, tribute cropping. Number three is something that is a bit of a controversial topic, but I love to go with it anyway. A few years ago, my buddy Deepak introduced me to this concept and he used to plant acres of pumpkin. Tribute cropping is exactly as it sounds. You use one crop as a tribute to another crop. What you do with tribute cropping is you look at the pests that typically attack your crop and you look at another crop that attracts those same pests. My favorite tribute crop is Amaranthus or the Chorai Bhaji. What I do is I usually plant that away from where I plant my main crops and the pests usually go over there and they leave my crops alone. If you don't time it right, the tribute crop can serve as a propagation ground for your pests and you end up with more pests. So it's a bit of timing and spacing and knowing where is upwind versus downwind. I like to tribute crop using amaranthus. People have used tribute crops when planting things like pumpkin and watermelon, um, even cucumber. So let me know your experience with that if any. And to my buddy Deepak, if you're watching, uh, feel free to expound on that, please. Number two. So you've tried everything on this list and you just can't seem to get rid of those pesky ants or bachak. Well, number two, cinnamon. You hear right, cinnamon. Go to the grocery, pick up a pack of cinnamon sticks, Throw them in a pot of water, boil them, fill them in a spray bottle like this, and you just spray it on your plant. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. That's why I wear sunglasses. Eye protection. You put it into the spray bottle and you just spray your plants. Spray it on your leaves, spray it around the area, spray everything in it. And it generally keeps the ants and the bachak away. Things to keep in mind while using cinnamon 
you have to reapply every every two or three days but it will keep them away what also works with the cinnamon is if you mix in a little bit of peppermint oil uh, you can pick that up at any pharmacy also when you grow in crops when you spray your crops with cinnamon or anything it is always advisable to put in a little to have a little allergen disclaimer because a lot of people are allergic to cinnamon and it's really important that they know that you use this on your crop number one burn everything kidding kidding number one ask agrinesia So now it's time to look at the winners of our YouTube contest from last week. So let's see who we have here. We have Janelle Valio, we have Rustic Spike, Gaza Boy, and Amrita Lautan. So feel free to send me a message or I will be messaging you. Thank you so much for participating and we will be collecting your seedlings soon. So as my thanks for subscribing to this channel and watching this video, here's some footage of a very cute duckling. Thank you to my friend Caitlin from New Zealand for sending me. Enjoy! Okay. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. What are you waiting on? Honestly.